Welcome to another episode of Lifelong Learner. This is the Out of Class Edition with Ben, Janesh, and Matt. Hope you enjoy. Welcome back to another episode of Lifelong Learner. Welcome, Ben. How are you doing? Janesh, mate, good to see you. Hey, by the way, I didn't I didn't comment as we were just prepping for the show. You've got a serious jar head haircut today. Mate, yes. I got um, the skin fade last week. And, mate, it's this time of year, those that get a skin fade or any haircut, it's a lot colder. Like it instantly, mm. you walk out going, oh, what have I done? Mm. I need to wear a beanie everywhere because it is cold. So it was getting a bit much everywhere. So I, yeah, had to, had to knit it up. Looks See, good. Yeah. Makes you look fresh. Thanks, Makes mate. Look fresh. Yeah. How you doing? How's well, your week been? Mate, it's been a really good week. It's been a really good week. I've started something new. Mm-hmm. And I hinted just before we got on air, and I thought we'd save it for <clears throat> the podcast. I um, I I was thinking, like, I just I don't know what the stimulation was. There was something. Uh, it might have been something on Facebook. I belong to Fit Over Fifty. It's a Facebook mm-hmm. group, and there's a couple of those kind of things. And and there's some dudes that are posting some pretty neat bodies. Uh, and chicks that are posting some really neat bodies in there. And maybe there was a bit of stimulation from that. And having been unwell with my eye recently and just kind of got right off track with the gym, I thought, you know, I need to I want I don't need to. I want to get I want to get serious around this. I really want to get myself mm-hmm. tidy. I, I don't think I can do it alone. I need someone to train me. Mm-hmm. And so I kind of put a few feelers out, spoke to a couple of PTs at the local gym. And, you know, bizarrely, you know, I, I spoke to one, it took him a week to get back to me to say, mate, you, did you want to do have a conversation around doing personal training? That's a long time. Like, it's a long time, mate. You're just, either fully booked, and I don't think he was, um, think. or just disorganised. And that- I don't want disorganised, I want organised. And But really what I did want was was someone that was going to, that was bodybuilding, you're not just a not just a PT, and so I reached out to a guy called Paul. Um, Paul, um, ja- mm, I'm going to get it wrong. Charlian, mm-hmm. Charlian. Sorry, Paul, if you're listening. And he is a multiple bodybuilding champion. Um, won Mister Olympia three times. Sorry, Mister uh, won Arnold three times. Mm. Has won Mister Olympia has won world uh, and on in October this year he competes for Mr Universe which is the, yeah, wow. the final time yeah. right so he's a he's a serious unit and he knows his stuff when it comes to bodybuilding owns a gym down in Rosebud <laughs> called Empire Fitness which is which is really a bodybuilding gym everyone in there they're not running on no one's running on treadmills in fact I don't even know if it's got a treadmill in it <laughs> um, but it's got every different form of bodybuilding uh, machinery in there and so I reached out to Paul had a chat with him and uh, he said mate yeah I'd be ha- happy to train you and I said so you know what do you th- what do I need to do like a couple of times a week three times a week He's, he looks he looks he gives you that look like are you an idiot are you an idiot are you simple and he says mate you, you're training six days a week you get a day off but otherwise, it's six days a week. I said, six? He said, yeah, yeah, six days a week. He said, you don't have to train every day with me, but you need to be training every day. Gym, yeah. Uh, I said, wow, oh, okay. Well, how about I train three days with you mm-hmm. uh, and I'll do three days uh, on myself. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, about a week ago, that was on, I went and saw him Thursday lunch and I said, all right, well, let's start this afternoon. Can I come and train in my, in a, in my jeans? <laughs> He's, mate, it's a bodybuilder gym. It, you can enough. change anything you like. Fair, like enough. Fair enough. You don't need leotards. This is a this is a bodybuilding gym, right? Yep. Yep. And um, so I trained that Thursday afternoon with him. Brutal. It's like I, I just I think I'm thinking to myself as I'm finishing it up. Fuck, I'm going to need an ambulance in two days oh, to get out of bed. I know. <laughs> uh, anyway, so we're doing a three day split, um, mate. I sort of I've done my Fifth leg day ever in my entire life now, <laughs> mate. How is the uh, how was the body feeling after week one of like an uh, literally uh, shocking you know, system? So, uh, I I'm feeling bigger already. 
to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> so we're almost uh, done six days. Of, yeah. Almost done six days of training. And it's uh, it's different. Like, mm. it really is. You know, you, you this, it's no surprise that these guys get these bodies. You know, if you are training six days a week, if you're eating like I, I've been told to eat. It was funny. I, I saw him the other day. And he said, mate, how's, you, how's, you, how's your, your diet going? Mm-hmm. What, what are you eating? I said, mate, it's, it's really, it's pretty good, actually, to be honest. Um, I said, I start in the morning. I have a couple of eggs and some beans. He goes, hang on. Do you say two eggs? Uh, and he gives me this stupid look. Yeah. And I go, yeah. He goes, mate, not even girls have two eggs. <laughs> to the ladies that are listening. Oh, I apologise. He said, not even girls have two eggs. He said, mate, four eggs. You need to have at least four eggs for breakfast. <laughs> I said, seriously, four eggs? Um, he goes, yeah, you got to have four eggs. I go, okay, okay. And then I have, you know, for morning tea, I have a protein shake. And then at lunch, I've been having some steak. And, it, oh, hang on a sec. He goes, steak. You can't have steak for lunch. You need to have, like, chicken. And you need to have a lot of it. You need to have a lot of chicken for lunch <laughs> or fish. He said, you can have your steak for dinner. He said, you got to eat. And then I said, okay, okay, okay. And then uh, and then in the afternoon, I have a protein shake. He goes, hang on, protein shake. you got to have your protein shake after you train, not before you train. It's got to be within 90 minutes of your training session. Okay, okay. And I said, and then for dinner, uh, from now on, I'm having steak. <laughs> and then he said, and then what do you have after dinner? I go, well. Dessert. Nothing really. He goes, mate, you've got to have more protein after dinner before you go to bed. Uh, he said, so get these yo pros. He said, they're a yogurt, mm. no no carbs, no calories, no sugar, no nothing there, but they're 20 grams of protein. So I go up to Woolies, like, like, as luck would have it, they're on sale. So I get like two Woolworths bags full of these, <laughs> <laughs> these yo pros. So I've got a freezer full of yo pros. Um, mate, it's been. Uh, it's been interesting. It's been a bit of fun. Mm. And uh, so um, lots of eating, lots yeah. of prayer. Mate, how it's are you really... going with the eating? You have to set yourself a reminder on your time to go, oh, I need to eat again. Look, it's actually not too bad. I have two protein shakes a day. I have four eggs for breakfast if you're listening, Paul. Um, <laughs> and then I have, you know, three chicken thighs for lunch <laughs> and – and then for dinner, uh, I have a 300-gram piece of steak or something like that. Mm. The rest is history, mate. So mate, um, your grocery bill is going to go through the roof. Grocery bill through the roof. Um, uh, I can't bring myself to buy organic free-range eggs. Not if I'm eating four. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Not if I'm eating four. Uh, fair, so, fair enough. Um, yeah. So, mate, it's um, it's been really interesting. But you know what I think is, uh, is was something I realised this morning when I woke up. There was just a feeling of it's nice to have someone, uh, coaching me uh, that I'm accountable to. Mm, mm-hmm. I'm accountable to him for me because, like you and, and like me in in our coaching world and as our role as leaders of organisations. Um, I'm accountable to my team for them, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. to my clients. And, you know, I've got two coaching clients this afternoon um, and I've got to turn up mm-hmm. for them. Yes. Uh, yeah. It's so nice to have to turn up for me. Mm. Uh, and that's, you know, I'm saying like, you know, training last night at 6.30, I, I normally would train at 4, but something popped up and, and so we rescheduled to six thirty. And as I as I said to him, "Yeah, okay, yep, I can, yeah, I can make it at six thirty. I'm thinking, "Oh, man, how was it? That's late for you, mate. That's, that's late. late. Well, it was from six thirty. We went a little over, so it was like quarter to eight that I finished the training. Got in, drove back home from Rosebud half an hour later. You know, I get home at twenty past eight, and mate, I can tell you, most nights I'm showered and in my pajamas." Having a cup of tea by twenty past eight, <laughs> so so it's uh, it's interesting. But mm. I'll tell you what also kicked it off was uh, I, I run a boardroom that I, I coach at lunch times, mm-hmm. and we we this the theme for this month is health, and we're having a conversation. And one of the guys said, 
and he does health really well. He said, most people would say that, um, that, and I often get this around the wrong way, but I'll say it this way, that their health gets in the way of their work. So, you know, I've got to work. I've got to, I've got to do some work. But, oh, damn it. Oh, I've got to go, on, do, go for a walk. Oh, it's, it's really it's annoying, but I've got to do my walk. I've got to go and do my walk. Or I've got to do my run this morning. Or I've got to knock off a bit earlier and go and, and train. Mm-hmm. He said uh, his work gets in the way of his health. Mm, yeah, interesting. Really good way to rephrase. Health is the foundation. Yep. And sometimes throughout the week he goes, oh, damn it, work's getting in the way of my health today. Mm. And it was re- it was a really interesting kind of – it was a really interesting way to put it mm-hmm. that health is what his week is about and that work gets in the way of that. Mm. Mm-hmm. Not my, my week is all about work yes. and health gets in the way of work. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so so that's been kind of interesting. Uh, and so on the weekend, I spent the weekend redoing my calendar, mm. holding around. What is, uh, except for your training days, what um, what other major changes? Oh, is that because you do now you do your later starts? Uh, so a, a little later start. So I've actually got time in the morning rather than be crazy back to back and just feed that cortisol from the time I get up to... <clears throat> time I get to work is to actually just add an extra half an hour to my morning mm. so that I've actually got a little it doesn't have to be time to the minute <laughs> yeah but I've actually got a little bit of space mm. to get up and and that's without know, getting up any earlier right you don't have to get up any I still get up at 5 30 but now yep. I can wander out mm. to the kitchen mm-hmm. and make my tea yep. not not March out quickly. Get the kettle. We're getting frustrated. The kettle's not boiling quick enough because I've got to get my tea, and then I've got to sit. I've got to drink my tea, and then while I'm drinking my tea, I've got to review, you know, some cool things to listen to and a bit of a podcast or whatever. And then I've got to do my meditation, and I look at my watch and go, <laughs> "I've only got 15 minutes. Damn it! I'll do a 12 minute meditation instead of a 15 minute meditation." Like, do you know? And now, yeah. just that extra 30 minutes means mm-hmm. I can just I can walk out to the kitchen. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's the other the other kind of change that I'm making and just being committed to 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 someone else, you know, like I'm accountable to him. We changed it yesterday, just this emergency thing came up. But mm-hmm. I, normally I would have just gone, oh, well, no gym today. Yeah, but you can't, right? Someone, some, someone else is turning up for you. Yeah. You're like, no, there's that. No, I got I to gotta be there. Yeah. 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 How are you going? You know, we, we'd had a conversation probably two or three months ago about you wanting to kind of get back on track with your running and mm. um, and just that, that was just not as easy. How How is it going? Yeah, so the running, yeah, it's interesting. Running hasn't, I've been moving more. Um, and I think it was the, I think when we were talking about, a couple of episodes ago when we were talking, um, when we were talking about taking Brom for a walk, been taking crew for a lot more walks because I was like, oh, he's getting on now and he's still relatively active. I'm like, oh. If he was to die tomorrow, like, would I be like, oh, shit, I probably should have taken him for more walks, mm-hmm. right? And I was like, oh, it's, a, it's a win-win, like, across, like, I think the other night, um, the girls were coming back from Melbourne, and it was like, oh, I was late. I was like, ah, oh, like, seven or eight. I was like, there's nothing to do. Instead of just sitting on the couch, I'm like, you know what? I'll rug up and take him for a walk. And that's been good. Um, but actually, mate, yesterday and today, I'm a bit under the weather, and it's interesting, like, Probably two months ago, I felt a little bit, and then I was like, oh, you know what? I need to just, like, be diligent with my vitamins and what I'm eating, right? And then you get good, and mm-hmm. it's probably been, like, I reckon maybe two, three weeks. Haven't done anything. No vitamins, no, bro, eating's gone. And then it's just like the, like, what are we talking about? What's the word of, what you said when things go naturally to disorder? What is it? Atro- no. Um, entropy. Entropy. Yeah, right. Like now it's like, oh, like, hold on. If you just kept a little consistency, it's not that hard. And I was like the perfect, I found like a perfect formula for me that worked that kept me good during the winter time, uh, like in good health in terms of vitamins in the morning, like like specific amount of water and goes out the window, right? And now I'm like, oh, feeling a little, little headachey, a little achy. And I'm like, Jash, if you just kept it up, 
it would be fine. Um, so, yeah, which is interesting. It's that bit of that battle I've gone, it's good, so I'll stop. It's, mm. not, fr- it's not front of mind when it's good, but then it's, it's like counterintuitive. It's like the reason why you're good is because you, there's that bank of consistency. Um, but then you go, oh, I can lax a little bit, but it's – and then you play catch-up. It's not like you can take, take your vitamin C today and go, yep, I'm good, right? It's like dosed up in, in, in your system for a while. So, yeah, which is interesting, interesting. I think sometimes i found that we set ourselves up for failure, you know, like we have a bit of a crisis. We go, that's it, no more. Okay, I'm going to run every day. I'm going to take 85 different vitamins every morning because I've Googled it and I need this for this and zinc for this and I need vitamin C for this. And so you buy them all. I don't know about you, but I've got many, <laughs> many shelves on the pantry that are full of vitamin packets that have only got like three tablets out of them. And you do all that and you think, okay, and I'm going to meditate in the morning and you start off, but you've, you've just bitten off more than you can mm. chew and you've really set yourself up for failure and it all just gets too hard, too overwhelming and then you stop. And so, you know, I was thinking about that for this time around because when it comes to bodybuilding, there's many layers, you know, to take it to the ultimate level. And I've just decided I'm just going to eat well, like mm-hmm. like I need to as a bodybuilder, and and train. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to try and do the supplements and the mm-hmm. you know, um, no testosterone injections yet. Um, <laughs> no, I'm joking, <laughs> listeners. Um, so you're joking that you've already started the TRT, right? No, but I haven't. I haven't, but but it certainly does exist as something that that exists. It's in that in, realm, right? It's in that realm, it's definitely in that bodybuilding realm. And uh, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna eat, mm. um, and I'm gonna train at the gym. I'm not gonna try and do anything else. I'm not gonna, you know, do a heap of cardio and try and get cut for now. I'm not gonna do mm. it. Just I'm just gonna just do that. Mm. Um, which is, and it's one hour of body training mm-hmm. every day, which is still, you know, it's a, it's a fair whack, mm-hmm. but having someone to keep me account to it. Because the problem is mm. with your vitamins, who who's keeping into account to take yeah. your vitamins? And the only thing to keep me account is when, like, like a day like today or a day like yesterday is when the body doesn't feel good, mm. right? You're like, oh, okay. This is the, like, the delayed, delayed effect by not taking them. Um, yeah, there is no, there is no accountability. There's no, and there's no, like, direct or timely consequence. Mm-hmm. All right. So you know when you have to like either turn up to a meeting or you miss something or you go, oh, if I don't do that, that's gonna hurt or that if that's um, there's a there's a direct consequence and that times it's a little bit easier to be accountable for those things when but if there's a delayed accountability or the delayed consequence, it's like oh yeah, it's fine. Or oh, it's going okay mm-hmm. at the moment. So why why would I need to? Mm-hmm. It was an interesting study I, I quoted yesterday on the radio show, and it was a study released in Lancet um, Journal looking – it was released in February this year, and the study looked at the cons, consequence mm-hmm. of government inactivity around getting people to be active. Mm. Uh, and the study looked at inactivity – versus activity, people that are active. Now, to the definition of doing an, a World Health Organization level of activity, which is what the measure was, is 70 minutes of vigorous exercise a week. Okay. Or 75. Yep. 75 minutes of vigorous activity a week. That's it. If you do that, World Health Organization says you've done enough exercise. Okay. So, you know- Three 30-minute sessions a week, mm-hmm. you're done. Mm-hmm. That's it. Okay. And so they looked at if people don't do that, if as a if as a, a world we don't get people to do that, in the next eight years we will generate 500 million extra chronic cases mm-hmm. of either cancer, heart disease, diabetes, dementia, depression, these are chronic diseases, what we call non-communicable diseases. Mm. The cold is a communicable disease. Mm-hmm. COVID-19, communicable disease. Mm-hmm. This is something you catch from someone else mm-hmm. that you pick up. These are all chronic diseases, on the other hand. But if we just don't do 75 minutes worth of exercise 
a week, we'll have 500 million extra cases of this globally at a cost of $520 billion globally. Mm. Just because we don't get people to do 75 minutes. If we don't change that. So it's not like if we take that away. No, no, if people just keep doing whatever they're doing, you and I exercising, John next door not exercising, um, we'll get an extra 500 million cases of chronic disease. Why isn't, um, why do you think like Western, uh, let me let me not rephrase it, not Western, say Australia and US don't do that well, right? So certain European countries, and I don't know them off the top of my head, like do the, prom- like the government level promoting activity, do it well. Um, what, yeah. <clears throat> We're so hooked in the Western model of healthcare because here's the contrast, right? When we think about communicable diseases, we spend a fair bit of money there. And if we look at COVID-19, for example, mm-hmm. over the three years, we had six and a half million people mm-hmm. die from COVID. Mm-hmm. The time it started to, to now, basically, six and a half million people globally. Uh, this study is showing that if we don't get people just to do 75 minutes of exercise, we're going to have mm-hmm. 500 million people with a chronic disease that is life-threatening. And these diseases, by the way, are the diseases that most people with COVID-19 died because of. It was the fact that they've got diabetes and got COVID was the reason they died, not necessarily just COVID, COVID alone. We know that most people that, that suffered uh, because of COVID-19, um, had many of them had at least four of these chronic conditions. Mm-hmm. Yet, for something like COVID, which is a communicable disease, uh, for example, we spent a lot of money, as you know, on media. Mm. We had premiers standing on stage every single day giving us the latest stats. We, we had to mask up. We hand sanitised. We social distanced. We stopped playing in playgrounds. You can only travel five k's, less than five k's away from home. All this was put into place like a crazy amount of energy and effort and sanity and money went into place for a communicable disease. Uh, We delivered 13.5 trillion vaccines. 13.5 trillion vaccines up to this point have been delivered at a cost of between two and 20 bucks a shot. 13.5 trillion doses. 13.5 Thirteen and a half trillion doses at a cost of between two and twenty bucks. Now, I'm not even going to do the math on that because it's too frightening. Yeah. But wouldn't you say if when you when you pulled those figures out and said, look, it's going to cost X amount, right? And who's who, the people that are usually going to have to front that bill is the government, and then eventually us because our taxes, right, will go up. Mm. Mm. Like, again, I'm no politician and I'm not a health expert, but wouldn't it make sense to say, you know what, if you did this exercise, say, for example, in Australia, your, your Medicare levy uh, would come down, right? You go, if you just went for a walk twice a week, because they go, look, if we incentivize that, it's actually going to cost us less in the mm. long run, so we don't need to charge their Medicare levy. Um, because this person's an active person and they're going to be going less to the doctors or less going to our health system. Those that aren't, sure, you're going to actually pay more. Like, again, that probably seems, and I'll probably oversimplify that, but there's I nothing like that. that simple. And you go, well, how do you police that? How do you monitor mm-hmm. that? Well, they policed us getting vaccinated. They policed us mm-hmm. wearing masks. They policed us, you know, not travelling 5Ks. If we're willing to do that for a communicable disease... What about a chronic disease, right? What about these chronic diseases that actually cost us a lot of money, mm. a lot of money? So, it, look, I guess it, you know, it, no doubt it's tricky. If it was a, there was a simple solution, I'm sure someone would have done it. But, um, you know, I think it's just we just all need to kind of, as a planet, we need to wake up to the fact that. We are getting softer. I had a, a dentist on the show the other day and he was talking about wisdom teeth and talking about um, uh, the breathing problems that he sees because people's jaws are getting too small. 
and they're small because we're not chewing because we're not we're not you know we're just not chewing stuff so because if you're going to buy a steak you of course buy fillet steak because it's beautiful and tender and you know everything's overcooked and mushed up and mm. um you know if you ever had a mcdonald's burger you almost don't need to chew it you just kind of bite a piece off and swallow because it's all so mushy and soft and people are living on that kind of food mm. no one's chewing anymore and there is this whole culture of we need more and more technology to make life easier mm. make life easier uh, when I retire, I'm going to retire so I can just relax in my Jason recliner and have the easy life. Well, we know that's a very slippery slope. <clears throat> yeah. And we've got that slippery slope for 20-year-olds now. Mm. Mm-hmm. Like just going on when you said on the easy life, you look at uh, the countries with the with the blue zones, right, and those aren't familiar with blue zones. It's people that have a very high, high expectancy, uh, life expectancy rate, right? They're still doing some sort of work, right? And their work mm-hmm. is active. They're still on a farm. They're still gardening. They're still <clears throat> walking to the local market to get their groceries, right? Like when they're 80 or 90. And it's because of that activity is why they're, they're fruitful. They're lively. They're, they're still smiling and laughing. And mm. it's not the, oh, I'm just going to sit on a recliner for, for 10 hours of the day when now when I'm retired, it's like, you know what, they continue, they may change some of their activities, but they continue to still be active, um, mm-hmm. which is interesting. So when I was listening to a recent podcast on Rich Roll, um, Chris, Chris Paul, so he's a basketballer and um, like a very highly, highly paid basketball. And um, he was recently talking about that oh, last four years, he's gone plant-based, right? And... He's seen a lot of like he did, he's, he went plant based purely for the um, biological effects on himself, right? The, the physical effects, not no animal activist, no nothing. He's mm. like, you know what? I've the first time in years he hasn't had to ice his knees after um, mm. uh, after a game. Like first time he going the next morning, he's like, oh, I'm a bit I'm a bit sore. Yeah, he'll be a bit sore, but like he used to say to his kids on the day of a game, oh, no, no, I can't, I can't um, throw the baseball with you. I need to be off my feet, right? Well, now he can, and it's, it's interesting where he goes, in past, he goes, oh, these conditions have been passed through through genes, right? Like mm. um, diabetes, uh, high cholesterol, all that. And he made a really good point. He goes, these conditions aren't passed down because it's the recipes are passed mm-hmm. down. They're interesting. He goes, it's the way we cook. It's passed down. He goes, the, you might be active and stuff, but he goes, uh, where he used to live, he goes, it's always fried food and um, sweetened iced tea at every meal. Everyone was, was, was good, but you look at, he goes, you look at the 60s and 70-year-olds in his family, he goes, they're, they're a little bit over, overweight, but they weren't overweight up until they're about 60. So they were still were highly active, but he goes, they go, oh, it's always right been in our family. And he goes, well, the recipes have been always in our family. And maybe let's change our recipes and the way we eat and the relationship to food. And it might change some of these genetic stuff. A lot of things, he goes, oh, it's genetic. It's, have you, have you had a history of heart disease? Yeah. But maybe you've got a history of heart disease because you've been eating like shit for multi-generations, um, mm. which is interesting. I've never heard that before. And I really like that. Yeah, it's not your it's not your genetics that's passed down. It's the recipes that are passed down. Uh, you know, I was saying grey rabbits have grey bunnies. Mm. Uh, the acorn doesn't fall far from the tree, and um, and those two terms are in reference not to genetics, but they're in terms of culture and lifestyle and belief and uh, potential that um, that we see families uh, parents that can't cook. And therefore, the kids can't cook, and you know they live that takeaway lifestyle. Mm. I went through a checkout the other day. Um, I had seven chickens uh, <laughs> and, <laughs> and four dozen <laughs> eggs. Yeah, uh, but the guy behind me was going through, and he had a liter. He had a carton of white milk. He had a, a big loaf of the cheapest, nastiest white bread. Uh, he had some packets of white two-minute noodles. Uh, he had a white French onion dip. He had two packets of shapes, 
and he had um, he had something else in there on a can of Heinz chunky soup. You know, like ouch, ouch, and there's nothing there that needs to be cooked. The can of soup needs to be heated, and he could use a microwave for that. Maybe the bread does if he wants to create toast. But the rest of it, there's just there was no cooking involved. There's no need, and obviously the guy can't cook. And th- there's so many like that now. Mm. Um, so that's really interesting, and I wonder whether it's where we don't just refer to recipe when it comes to recipes around food, but recipes around exercise and re- recipes around you know, what we consume as far as in our mind and what we watch and what we listen to and um, recipes around how we communicate. Mm. All that gets passed down. Mm -hmm. And recipes, I think, um, in terms of when you say how you communicate, like also like the recipe of values, right, on how um, at home it's acceptable to do A, B and C. So then this person, when they grow up or with their families or other friends, it's, it's acceptable mm-hmm. to to do that, and it's my it's it's interesting, and it's um it's interesting where like I think this year since um, coaching a junior soccer team, it's I'm realizing that like we see I see these kids three times three times a week, right? So I see them probably ninety uh, probably like four or four and a half hours, right? A, a week, right? Same group of kids, four and a half hours a week. And it's interesting going, like, and now they go, now they know the, the recipe of, of soccer training, right? They go, they know, okay, this is not going to fly or this is, like, this is rewarded, this is, no, no, hold on. We're going to sit down and have a conversation, um, which is interesting because at the start, it's like some of them didn't get told, like, have never been told, hey, just pull your head in, like, either mm. from... Uh, parents or or school teachers or siblings or whoever and it's like no that's not gonna fly here and um yeah which is interesting and it's interesting in terms of every in every interaction we have on a daily basis if it's even people you don't know it's like that chance to go can you pass on your recipe and what is your is your recipe worth passing on Mm mm-hmm Mm. But, you know, first of all, giant kudos uh, coaching junior soccer four days a week. Like, wow. I, I, get, I can feel my heart starting to race. I've got a little bit of anxiety even just thinking about it. Um, so massive kudos for that, A. Uh, and B, uh, you never know how what you say and do today may affect the lives of millions tomorrow. And for some of those kids, uh, they'll look back on this year uh, and coach Janesh uh, and the impact that he made on their life because I remember he he got me to pull my head in. Um, so, yeah, mate, I just, again, there's probably a second kudos there, just kind of have the awareness of the impact you might be having on these mm. kids or I'm sure you're having on these kids by giving them a new recipe book, a new option, a new playbook that they could choose to play from. And they may not. Um, they might go home and use their normal family playbook. But mm. um, it, it's nice that they've got a couple of different playbooks now maybe to choose from. And I think in society we've we've had that, you know, I think we've talked about this before on the podcast, you know, the uncle that whispers in your ear, the mm. uncle that brings you that little bit of advice. Um the wisdom mm. that you couldn't hear from your own parents, either because they couldn't give it to you or because of the relationship you had with them, the ego that you may have had as a teenager. Um, you just you, you just shut off from hearing their communication. Um, so, mate, it's really important we've got we, – we have these coaches, these mentors in our life, like what you're doing with those kids. Mm. Do you feel that? Yeah, I do. I do. I think it's, um, what was it like last night? It was just, uh, it was interesting. We are talking about referencing what we did on the weekend. And then um, one of the kids I said to him, I've gone, mate, you're an intelligent kid. Like, you're super smart. How about you start using it? And the kid just like 
like looked at me like I've never heard that before. I've mm. never heard being called intelligent or smart or yeah, yeah. He was always like, yeah. And it was super. And the rest of the session, he was like, yep, okay, I'm on it. Mm. And so, um, yeah, it's yeah, it's it's fascinating. And it's also like if we go, if one person in our team does something, then we we all pay the consequence because on the field that's the same thing. So if one person standing in a line, they kick a ball away, the the whole team does a lap. So they they it's only only takes a few of few times of that they go okay no 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 we, we if if one person does it it's a, it's a team consequence, mm. um, which either they never some of them never been pulled up for something like that or they the others are like it's not my problem it's fine so they're not gonna help hold that other player accountable and go hey mate just like come on let's listen because if you if you're not listening we're we're all we're all not listening. Mm. Um, yeah, which is interesting. Yeah, it, it, it is. Um, that part is uh, that's part that what what keeps me showing up. And I probably have more white line. I think I told you this before. I've got probably more white line fever on the game day than the kids do. Mm. So, um, yeah. So yeah, but it's that part because it's you got the same consistent. It's not like a you got the same consistent kids for a whole season. And the, I didn't realise how big the season is. Season's February till September. So it's a long time. But my, so serious commitment. <laughs> serious commitment. Right, last night it was under lights. We're in rain. We're in muddy. You can mud up to, up to like, covered because the field was all chopped up. But it was good. Good. Lots of smiles. Mm-hmm. They're moving. We're talking about, like, active, right? Yeah. These, these kids are moving. These kids are moving and it's better than kids being in front of a screen. Like these kids are moving like three times a week. Some of them like, might come to training and then come to a game twice a week. All right. So if we can do, if I'm doing my part to make these kids move and active for that 70 minutes, right? They're doing 70 minutes plus, right? As opposed to it's easy to go come home from school or come home from work, put the TV on, get on a console play some games, do dinner, you're sitting again, do your homework, and then you sit to read a book, and then you're in bed. And then next you're day- You're doing you hard things. You know, like you're, these these kids are out, in, like you said, in the rain and the cold and the wind, and they're under lights and it's dark and it's nighttime. And, and it's like it just makes, you know, that kind of, that kind of exposure means, you know, on a, on, a, on a weekday when maybe they've got to walk home from school and it's a little drizzly, and mum says, do you want me to pick you up? The kid goes, no, no, I'll be fine to walk. Mm. Just a bit of drizzle. Mm-hmm. Whereas the kid that's soft, you know, if there's cloud coming over, it's like, you know, I don't want to walk home. Mm. So, you know, it's it's building that resilience. Mm. Um, what's that saying? Oh, mate, David well, Goggin well, says that, saying, he goes, what, when he asks, why do I do hard things? Because I do hard things so life is easy. Right, yeah. so when when life happens, it's okay. It's like he goes goes through his his, his bit of his rant about his creating mental uh, mental calluses, and it's um and it's interesting. And we talked about this a few times where people don't do hard things anymore. And then when um when something happens, when a hard thing happens, which is inevitable, um it's like oh, the world ha- the world is over. The world is over, and it and it could be like say the early onsets of chronic chronic disease, right? And it's like, oh, what do I do? You know what? Well, and I'm uh, largely generalizing here. Oh, I'll just go to Medicaid and I'm going to um, not going, oh, you know what? Maybe I should move more. Maybe I should actually change the way I eat or really change some fundamental beliefs. It's like, uh, yeah, just kind of these hands up in the air, like, oh, just nothing works. It's fine. Mm. Um, because they haven't done hard things. Mm. Mm. Now look. So, what is what do you reckon the solu- What is the solution? <clears throat> oh, mate, that's an interesting. As a society, as a country, mm. how do we how do we make a shift? Like, if you yeah. if you if you if you could be the health minister, mm. or the premier, or the prime minister, and that you could you you. 
you were able to have an influence on society. And and let me add to this, and you got to keep it real. Mm. What what would you do? How would we change society? How would we change this thinking of that we've got to try and make life easier for everybody? Mm. I would somehow, um, again, before you made the uh, reference to uh, to vaccines and checking in places and checking out of places, I would have thought, oh, this is hard. But now when you made that reference, it's like, actually, if we did that, like somehow mandate, we mandate vaccines, right? But And we mandate you got to check in here, and mandate you got to stay at home. How about we mandate being active? Uh, that's it. Not, not what you eat, like, and everyone, because we eat, like, you don't need... Like, if you are physically able, and, and everyone, I mean, if you're not a quadriplegic, right, and you're not, like, fully bedridden with whatever other condition, um, even if you're quadriplegic, right, get outside. Like, just just move, like, just a couple times a week, right? And if there's some sort of incentive to it does come off taxes, does come off Medicare or something, because if you just say, yeah, we're going to mandate it, there's no connection to it. There's no connection to it. Um, like you look at uh, some of the Scandinavian countries do it really well. Where it's, I, I'm not, I don't know if it's mandated, but it's ingrained in their culture mm-hmm. that they're, they're, they're active. They're, they're, they put babies out in the cold, like to do cold exposure to go, you know what, there is benefits mm-hmm. of going. There's, there's a whole bunch of prams outside the shop. Right, um, with babies still in it because there is health benefits there, and it's like they've kind of gone, Oh, okay, we're not going to follow everyone else's path of easy because easy might not mean, uh, easy might not be, might not mean healthy longevity. Um, but I would say just active, just like, yeah, active. How do you mandate it though? Because you know, the government's got away with mandates around COVID-19 because of the really strong fear campaign that they led and that the media led. Uh, there was a lot of fear that drove people to have the vaccines, to keep their masks on. Mm. Uh, there was also fear, and which the government could justify because of the, the fear that was generated mm. in the media. There was also fear around if I didn't do that, then I was breaking the law mm. and... You know, uh, I'd get in trouble. I'd get a fine. But maybe even just the direct cor- correlation to, and I'm talking just Australia here, to your Medicare levy, right? Because here it's like, yeah, if you earn over a certain threshold uh, and you don't get health insurance, uh, you get a Medicare levy, right? So it's pretty how much. How are you going to measure the exercise though? How are you going to how are you going to mandate that that you have to exercise and maybe you got to wear a fitness tracker and it's got to record how many steps? How are you going to mandate people? you know, wearing a fitness tracker and submitting their data every week to a government portal and mm, Yeah, I hear. I hear. Like how do we how do we get people to do that? Um mm. without a fear driven campaign. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and without the without the um like without the notion of going, oh the government's got our data. The government's got our GPS data. It's like, no, like we just want to know you're moving, right? Like I don't care where you are, uh, what you're doing, like, and uh, don't strap it to your dogs. Your dog's moving around in the backyard all day. Um, okay. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how you would, how you would monitor monitor that. Um, but it was in the blue zone. Mm-hmm. Um, um, Dan Butner, mm-hmm. who's done all the research on the blue zone, he says it's not that people eat better, it's not they exercise more, it's not that they, it's the environment that supports them doing that. And so his big thing is, that, you know, he's often um, employed by cities when they're about to do, you know, some infrastructure change. And he says, like, you know, within, I'm making this up, within 2Ks of the city centre, uh, you don't have roads. You don't build more roads, you build more footpaths. Mm. You don't build more roads, you build more bicycle tracks. Mm-hmm. And so that environment then makes it harder for cars, easier for bikes. Harder for cars, easier for pedestrians. Mm-hmm. And so the environment then encourages people to park their car on the outskirt and walk into mm-hmm. the city centre. Mm-hmm. Um, he said that's environment driven. Mm-hmm. And so 
but what the government does is says, oh, we need people, more people to access the city, so let's <clears throat> knock some buildings down and make our roads wider. Mm. He's actually saying make the roads more narrow so less people can drive in yeah. and they're forced to walk. Mate, interesting you should say that. And uh, listeners that have uh, – have you been have you been to Boston before? No. Mate, so Boston, uh, amazing city, and we still got a lot of good friends uh, out there. And there is, like, right in the heart of the city by MIT and BU and all that, it's um, – there's parts everywhere. And there's, like, this lovely path – along the Charles River on either side, that there's people walking, running, bike riding all the time, like all the time. And it's like no, like when you look at something like that, it's like, oh, there's no glimmer of doubt on why they host like one of the biggest marathons in the world, right? Like it's um, it's like active, like people are walking, like uni students, college students are walking on their bikes a lot. But their public transport system is great too, as well. So it's not like a lack of public transport system. Like their uh, their their metro and their their buses are great, but there is this infrastructure of walking. And there's like these every so mm. often there is these little park gyms or things where you could do bits and pieces along your run, um, which is interesting. I'm seeing more of those like park gyms uh, popping up more uh, in Australia. Uh, but in the new in the new estates, they're not redoing redoing any old ones. They're like, uh, when we do a new one, we'll probably should put this in because it promotes activity. Mm. Yeah, mate, that's interesting. You know, I was thinking about that just then and, and, you know, think about Woolworths. And to be fair, there's a lot of the Woolies that I walk into. And, you, and when you work, walk through the main entry gates, you actually walk into the fruit and veg section. Mm, which is great. Fair, you know, which is pretty cool. I hadn't actually thought about that until I was actually visualising it. But I wonder if the next step would be that, you know, the supermarkets have to be two levels. The bottom level is all fresh food, mm. which would make sense, right, because the lower level is cooler, the warmer mm. level is – the higher level is warmer, uh, and it's all fresh fruit, veggies, meats, you know, et cetera. Mm. And then if you want to access anything that's a pantry item, you've got to walk up the stairs. Mm. Mm-hmm. And they're upstairs. Yeah. So you could actually walk into a Woolies mm. – do a circle, a circuit on the bottom section and <laughs> leave the checkout and only be in a fresh food section. Yeah, yep. Um, it's like if you just go to a greengrocer, right? It's like going, um, all, you you all you're yeah, getting is exactly. just fresh stuff, right? So Correct, yeah. Um, um, and and that bottom level, by the way, wouldn't only be fresh food, but it would be fresh, healthy, sugar-free, mm-hmm. yeah, et cetera, you know, so mm-hmm. there wouldn't be the yogurt section that's full of chocolate yogurt mm-hmm. and flavoured like, yogurt. I'm not sure of every Woolworths, but and the Woolworths that we go to, in their defence, we've got veggies, and the first aisle is actually their health food aisle. Yes. Right? Like, which is which is pretty good. However, I don't think a lot of people go through that. No. They will just go, I'm just going to keep walking. Right? But also in their health food aisle is their white bread, which is interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and a lot of the health food is, I noticed, I was in there the other day, it's a lot of um, healthy-seeming alternatives, you know, Um, but the reality is they're full of dates or sultanas or, again, it's sugary, you know, not appetising, what's the word? Um, um, I'll, I'll use the word appetising. Taste good, mm. you know, taste good stuff. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Honestly, stuff that's um, always going to be good for you. So, mate, uh, we're at, we're kind of a time. We know mm. what's the what's the summary for you? I'm interested. What are you? What's the? Uh, we've sort of gone everywhere today, but there yeah, we have um, summary and maybe the take home. Mm. I would encourage um, people to intentionally move more. Mm. In, yeah, intentionally move more. And whatever that looks like for that person, right? It could be a walk. It could be um, it could be anything. It could be if you've got young kids, it's it could be like, you know what? I'm actually going to play a little bit more on the ground with Lego or something with the kids, right? Like move as opposed to sit on the couch and let them play on the ground. Like, you know what? I'm going to sit on the ground. I think move with... Um, 
move with purpose, right? Don't just unintentionally go, oh, I gotta move, I gotta walk to the car, I gotta walk to the office, blah, blah. Like intentionally choose to move at least a couple of times a week. Uh, I would encourage that. Mm. Yeah. What about, what about you? I, I think, I think my, my mind's gonna be quite, yeah, I think, yeah, just just kind of what I wrapped on with Woolies. I'd be, I'd be, my take home is, again, reflecting on that guy's, <coughs> excuse me, shopping that was behind me and versus my shopping. Um, and certainly for myself to begin with is to make an effort that every time I leave Woolies, it's, it's only, my basket only contains things that I've got to put in the fridge. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not having pantry items. Nothing that you put in the pantry, nothing that's mm-hmm. in a box or a jar or, you know, that's going to um, that, that's going to last through the zombie apocalypse mm-hmm. um, to use to, to grab just only shop in the refrigerated sections. Mm-hmm. So the fruit and veg, uh, the meat case, dairy case, uh, and that's pretty it. Not the freezer case with the frozen pizzas. Um, and, and just leave with live you know, food that's going to rot uh, if it's not consumed. Mm. Uh, I think that would be just a challenge for people just to notice their basket, how much of it uh, could you actually put in the pantry and still eat a month later. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's but tricky, man, It's and it's as, as you said, it's an ongoing journey. We get on track, we get off track. Um, uh, but it's the contrast that it just makes life so interesting and so... That's the journey, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is. Mate, always a pleasure. Good. Mate, Mate, good to see you. Likewise. Until next time, listeners. Thanks for listening to another episode of Lifelong Learner. If you like this episode and want to know more and hear other episodes, head over to lifelonglearnerpodcast.com where you can subscribe to our newsletter where you'll be the first to know when new podcast episodes come out. And if you want to say hello, tell us a joke or ask us a question, send us an email at hello at lifelonglearnerpodcast.com. Thanks again.